Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to play PlayStation Vita games on Android with Vita 3K. Let's get started. Alright, to kick things off, it's worth pointing out the performance of Vita 3K will vary from device to device, and also from game to game. It's also no secret that you will need a fairly powerful Android device in order to emulate games at full speed. It will need to be 64-bit, it will need to be compatible with Vulkan 1.0, which is at least Android 7. Not every single game is going to work, not every single game is going to work perfectly. I'd recommend checking out the compatibility list for Vita 3K and I'll drop a link to it in the description below. And you will have to provide your own games, Vita 3K does not come with any games. To pick up Vita 3K, head to vita3k.org. From here, click on the download button and scroll down to where you see Android Nightlies and click grab from GitHub. From here, scroll down to where you see Vita 3K Android release.apk. At the time of filming, it is release two, but by the time you're watching this, it might be release three or release four, so pick up whatever version is showing and then open up the file and click install. Once Vita 3K finishes installing, open it up and select your language. And then you've got an option here to download firmware, so click on that. It will bring you to PlayStation's official website. We're picking up free official PS Vita firmware here, which is pretty awesome. Now it does say download update, you can click on it. And if nothing happens, like nothing happened for me, you'll have to long click on the download update button. Once that happens, you will see an option that says download link. So I long clicked it here and I can scroll down and there is download link. So as soon as I click on that, it should let me download this file. It lets me know I can't download it securely, but that's okay. It's 127 megabytes. I'm going to select keep and let it download. Once the firmware finishes downloading, go back into Vita 3K and click download font package. And this should automatically start downloading and it shouldn't take too long at all. It's a total of 54 megabytes. When the download completes, head back to Vita 3K and click on install firmware file. Vita 3K will ask you for access to photos and media on your device. If you don't want to give it access, click deny and while well, your adventure ends here and feel free to stop watching the video. If you want to proceed though, click allow. Now navigate to where you downloaded these two files and chances are it's in your downloads folder. At least for me it was. The two files are psp2updat.pup and psvupdat.pup. I'm going to click on psvupdat.pup first, which is showing us 134 megs, and that is the firmware file. If you've done everything correctly up to this point, the firmware should automatically start installing, and it does take a bit of time, so be patient. The next step here is to click OK once it finishes and then click install firmware file again and we'll install the font package. With any luck, Vita 3K will bring you back to the folder you were just in and then select psp2update.pup and it will automatically install the font package and it doesn't take very long. When the fonts package finishes installing, click OK here and you're pretty much done with the initial setup. There's not much left. If you've done everything correctly beside download firmware, it should say installed V and download font package should say installed V. If it says V for both, you're good to go click next. This screen shows interface settings and by default, you probably don't need to change anything here if you don't want to. I'm just going to click next. On the next screen, you'll get a nice message that says completed. You have now completed initial setup. Your Vita 3K system is ready. Hooray. Click OK from here. So the next screen does have some helpful links, but if you don't want to see it every single time you open up this emulator, just scroll to the very bottom of this page. And it does say show next time with a check mark. Just feel free to uncheck that and click close. From here, click create user to set up your PS Vita account. And then you can change your avatar if you want to, but I'm not going to in this video. I'm going to click in the text box here and change it from user one to Mr. Sujano. But feel free to put in whatever username you want. Once you're done typing, click confirm. And then on the next screen here, click OK. And then on the next screen, we have a couple of different options. Create user if you wanted to set up another user. Uh, delete user or automatic user login. If you didn't want to have to select a user every single time you boot up Vita 3K and you've really only got one user, click automatic user login and avoid yourself a little bit of a hassle each time you boot up the emulator. Once you're done that, click on the user you want to use and it should bring you to the main screen in Vita 3K. Click on this screen and get to this screen here. 
this is where pretty much all of the magic happens. You can add additional games, you can configure settings and have some fun. To add your games, you will have to install each game individually. If you've got a whole bunch of games here, and I guess a whole bunch of storage on your device, it will take a bit of time and you will need some patience. It's easiest I found if the game is in zip format. So I'm gonna click file here and install .zip or .vpk. And then from here, I'm gonna select select file and then find the game on my phone. If you're having trouble here, just double check your game and make sure it's not in something like a .rar format. You might need to extract it and then install it from there. Uh, find your game and click on it and install it. It does take a little bit of time here, but be patient and eventually you will have your game up and installed. If you've got a whole bunch of games, as I said, it's gonna take some time. This here is installing Street Fighter X Tekken, and it will be the game I take a look at in this video. So once the installation finishes, if everything went correctly, you should get this message here that says installation complete and one archive's content successfully installed. From here, you can click OK and it should show up in your PS Vita menu. If it doesn't, you might have to recheck your game and maybe you've just got a bad copy of it and you can try to install it again or maybe try a different game and see if that works. Once your games are done installing, if you're impatient, you can click on a game and open it up and start playing if you want. And if you wanted to tinker around some more, you absolutely can. I'm gonna click on controls here. I have a Bluetooth controller paired to my phone, so I just wanted to make sure everything is okay with it. So I'm gonna click controllers. You can see here it does recognize one controller, the Xbox One S controller, which is interesting because it's an 8-Bit Doe Pro 2, but that's okay, I did check it out and everything's working, so not a problem here. Now, if you don't have a Bluetooth controller, or even if you do, click on controls and click on overlay. If you've got the Bluetooth controller, feel free to uncheck show gamepad overlay in game and that'll clear up your screen. And if you don't have a Bluetooth controller, click modify gamepad layout. From here, feel free to move the buttons around if you want. If you screw something up, click reset gamepad. And when you're done, click hide gamepad overlay and click the X on overlay. The next step is to go to configuration and then settings. If you've got a Snapdragon processor, you may want to fool around in here with custom drivers. On the core section, you don't really need to do anything at all. On the CPU tab, I don't recommend changing anything. So just click the GPU tab and we can have some fun here. If you have a Snapdragon processor, this is where you can add your custom driver. You can click on custom driver and upload it. To download custom drivers, Kimchi has a great GitHub page and I'll leave a link to it in the description below. There are a whole bunch of different versions here and each version may perform differently on different games. So you will have to experiment around and see what works best for you. These are free, they're open source and Interestingly enough, they're the same one that Skyline Emulator uses. If you don't have a Snapdragon processor, you can't use custom drivers, so you'll just have to stick with whatever you've currently got. So don't worry about that section at all. Uh, for the internal resolution upscaling, by default it is set to one times, and I recommend keeping it at one times until you see how your games perform. If you wanted to let your games look better, you can increase the upscaling here, but it will come at a cost of performance, and sometimes quite a bit of performance. For the anisotropic filtering, it is set at one times, and I do recommend keeping it at one times until you know how your games run. From here, go to the emulator tab. You can change your audio backend if you want from QBEB to SDL, but I do recommend just keeping it at QBEB, and hopefully you don't have any issues. And there is an option here called performance overlay. By default, it is unchecked. However, I do recommend keeping it checked at least the first times you play your games just to see how they're running. If you check it, it'll automatically have minimum and top left selected and you can keep it at that. It'll give you an FPS counter on the top left hand corner of your screen to let you know how fast your games are running. The target is 60 frames per second, but you may encounter some performance issues if your device is underpowered or possibly the game isn't that great in terms of compatibility just yet. You will have to be patient here, but at the same time, the FPS is a great tool to see how a game is running. Once you're done tinkering around in there, click on your game and boot it up and have some fun. It'll bring you to this screen once you initially click on it and then click on start from here. So here is Street Fighter X Tekken up and running and running pretty well and I'm using stock drivers. The graphics look great. Performance is between 52 to 57 frames per second and this is a Snapdragon 888. I do have the option to use custom Adreno drivers to try to help out performance just a little bit. I may try that. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. 
Remember to check out the Vita 3K compatibility settings and also check out the community. They've got an amazing community and I'll drop links to absolutely everything in the description below. And let me know your thoughts about Vita 3K on Android in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate, save your state.